What is up guys, Fi here, and today we're gonna to be looking at how you can learn from your mistakes. So I just got Diamond on another one of my accounts, and I played Zerath a lot on that account because I really wanted to learn him. But when you're learning a new champion, sometimes you just do lose your lane because you aren't aware of the matchup or you don't have that much experience. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to learn from your mistakes and make sure they don't happen again. So a couple of days ago, I played against LeBlanc as Zerath for the first time, and I wasn't aware of the matchup, and I did lose my lane. She got a couple of kills at a dragon fight, and I just couldn't recover, so she snowballed really hard, and I ended up losing my lane. So after that game, I watched the replay, and I figured out what I did wrong. I went back, and I looked at the lane phase, and I saw where my mistakes were, where I could do things better, and that's going to be the first thing. That's the best thing you can do if you ever lose your lane, is watch the replay. Now there are two replay systems that I use right now, and I have both running as a backup. I use LSI and I use Skin Spotlights. Now I've never had either of these programs affect my performance in game, and you can get both of them in the links from the description below. So the clip you've been watching is from my first game. That's where I played pretty badly. I aim my Q at her a lot. I play too aggressive and I try to trade way too much. Now this clip is my second game where I adapted. So I went back and I figured out those things. I figured out that I need to play more passive and I need to aim my Q at the minions instead of her. So I focus on pushing the wave in early to try and get level two first. And I don't really trade with her too much. I only really poke with her. So if she wants to do damage to me, then I run away and I play passive and I only actually do damage to her where she can't return it. So the other thing that I do is I aim my Q at minions. That's what I prioritize on them rather than her. I do try and hit both of them if I can line the shot up, but I always prioritize the minions into tower. Now what this does is it resets the wave into the middle of the lane again, which is safer for me and means she can't freeze in front of her tower. And she also has to focus on CSing rather than trading with me. So in the first clip, I didn't play well, right? I didn't win my lane, but I didn't really lose it either. I didn't get rolled and I didn't die a lot or anything. The problem was that she got two kills at a dragon fight and then she snowballed. And so I went back and I looked at how she snowballed and how I could avoid that. So there are really two things that I think I did kind of badly in the first game that allowed her to snowball a little bit more that I didn't do in the second game. So in the first one, I tried to follow LeBlanc and help my jungler here and I start to move down. I walk over a ward and LeBlanc goes straight for me. Now, because I'm not near my tower, I have to blow both summoners and then she even dives on me and I do pick up a kill, but that kill is way more worth for her than it is to me because she can keep snowballing with that kill. So this is what I do instead in the second game. I ward my sides and I just don't follow and then I ping and it's kind of up to my team to react because there's no way that I can follow without putting myself at risk. Your team might flame you for not moving but it's your job to ward and see her moving and then ping as much as you like. I ping only once in this clip because they actually back off but if they didn't back off then I would just keep pinging until they do finally realize and leave. Now some of you are going to say that well my team just doesn't move so there's nothing I can do and that's right there's nothing you can do if you put a ward down you see them and you ping them really early then unfortunately there's just nothing more you can do it's up to your team to then listen to you and leave. The other thing that I didn't do very well in the first game was I tried to help my team when they were caught way too much so when they took a bad fight I just followed them in and I tried to do as much damage as I could before I died. So this game we're going to see I play very passive but it ends up working out way better. So we are behind this game like the other game. Jinx and Pantheon are both fed so I play really passive so I can just poke because they all have a lot of burst. The biggest thing that I can do to help my team is hit the carries at the back. So I aim my Q at the LeBlanc here you can see instead of the Nar, And it looks like I'm way too passive but they all have so much damage and I just need time to do my job properly. We can see that I do play really passive, but this is just kind of the playstyle that Zerath has, and it depends on the champion you're playing, but this is how I adapted my game from the first time. This actually ends up netting me a couple of kills. I get the pick onto LeBlanc with my ultimate, and then a flash Q onto Jinx, which gets me another kill. Telling you how to learn from your mistakes is actually a really hard topic to cover, and it's something I've wanted to do for ages, but it's best to do it with examples, so I hope you guys can see where I failed the first time, and how I adapted that in my second game, which I won. The biggest thing I can say to you is make sure you get a replay system and you go back and actually take the time. Yes, it does add time onto it, but if you really want to climb, then just playing over and over and doing the same stuff over and over is definitely not the way to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, remember to hit that thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.